Okay. Uh, hi, everybody. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Alicia. Hi, everyone. So we had a new release, 135. And we are here to tell you all about this. Lots of cool features. Lots of cool features. So let me show you the slides. Um, so we have quite a few of agenda here. Um, but this time we will have just a one huge overarching demo to show you all of the new stuff. So let me jump into the terminal. So here I am. And uh, actually the first feature is Debbie's favorite feature. So Debbie, uh, what do I do? Yeah, so now, so remember, right? We released UI mode and everyone was like, wow, UI mode, this is so cool and it is so cool. But I'm a big VS Code fan. So when you're in VS Code, you had to open the terminal, do npx playwright test dash dash UI, then you open up UI mode, yeah. then you change stuff in VS Code, then you have to go back to UI mode to play the test. And it's a little yeah. bit, I want to just from VS Code, I want to just click a button and open UI mode. And now we have that button. So it's a checkbox, not a button, but uh, that's fine. So we check show trace viewer instead of show browser, show trace viewer. And then when we run our test, in VS Code by clicking the play button, it's going to open up that UI mode, um, just like we have in UI mode, that trace viewer. So you have all the features that you have in UI mode, except for the sidebar of tests, because that's in VS Code. So yeah. now you will play your test in VS Code. You can edit the test in VS Code. And then as you edit it, you just press play again, and it's going to you know, replay that test. So at the moment, there's no watch mode, but I believe that's coming. But for now, it's super simple and you know much better developer experience if you're using VS Code with the new VS Code extension, you have the powers of UI mode. Yep. So uh, Debbie, how do I hide the trace viewer? Ah, yeah, so can you can just uncheck it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uncheck it, it hides. And I can have either the show browser or the show trace viewer uh, exactly. enabled. Okay, so let's use this new feature to actually play a little bit around with the request interception. Cool. Okay, so we have this player, the dev website. And um, Debbie, so I have this image of browsers on the player, the dev. Let me actually pop out this snapshot. I can hit this open snapshot button. So it's full screen. So I want to make this image black and white in a grayscale. How would you do it? I'd do it with CSS. Yeah, you, you do it with CSS because you <laughs> own the website. Yeah, I don't have access to player.dev. So the way I will do it is using the request interception. So I can open DevTools, inspect the image, and grab the URL. So this is the browsers.png image, right? Okay. So now I can set up a request interception for this URL. Page.route, and I'll say anything that's browsers.png. And I'll just capture this request. Now I want to get the actual image, and I will use the fetch API to fetch the actual response from the server. Okay. Then I'll get the bytes of the image, and this is just usually the response of the body. This gives me the, the PNG bytes. Okay. Now there is this GIMP library. Let me actually import it. Yep. It's a Node.js library for image manipulation. Real simple. I can do gimp.read these bytes. Oops. Okay. And I can do a gray image as easy as this. Nice. So, so we're getting the, the root. Thing. Yeah. Okay, you finish, finish, and then I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can okay. get it. Yeah. Uh huh. And the last thing I need to do is to fulfill the mm, response. Okay. And I will use the response to get all the proper headers that I received from the server. And I will substitute the body with the gray image buffer. And it requires image PNG as a M type. Okay, so we're going to the browsers.png fetching that image. 
And yeah, then we're yeah. getting the bytes from that response of that fetch call. Yeah. Then we're using that library to basically say, turn it into gray. And then we fulfill okay. that route. So we say, when you're going to that route, give me the response, but then change the body and makes it, basically make it gray. Yes. Let's see how it cool. works. Nice. Aha, so I got my gray images here. Cool. But now you can also go here to the network tab. Yep. Scroll all the way down and you will see that there is this API request okay. and fulfill the request. And this so the, is the request. Uh -huh. The API is the first one, the fetch call to the image. Yes, yes. So this should and be colorful. See, yes. It is colorful, yeah. yeah it is and the next one is image. fulfilling the, the image, so it's turning it into gray. Yep, and it's fulfilling Beautiful. the gray image. Exactly. That makes it really exactly. easy to see what's going on. Yep. And these are actually the new feature. This is the new feature for 135. It's uh, annotations for the network tab. Cool. OK, now more experiments. So Debbie, I want to take uh, to make a visual regression test. And I want to take a screenshot of this landing page. To have screenshot? Yeah, to have screenshot is the right method for do, to do this. But there is an issue, and the issue is this number Ooh, in the middle of the yeah. screen. Yeah, because as soon so, as people watch this video, we're going to have like 53 stars or 54K yeah. stars or 55. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So the number will change. It will break my screenshot. So what do I do? Uh, change the number to a static number. That would be hard, but we yeah. have this masking API. And hmm. uh, I can actually overlay parts of the page with okay. the rectangular areas. For this, I would need to get a locator for this number. So I'll just click and get this locator. Yeah, but that's that's going to be a problem, right? Because 52 is going to be 53 tomorrow or 54. <laughs> Very good point. So I have a trick up my sleeve for this. Let me show you the trick. So we will start with this expect page to have screenshot. And we'll use this mask API and with this locator. And as you noticed, this 52K is actually problematic. It's dynamic. I'm not going to find it. Yeah, it's dynamic. So instead, I will actually change this into a regex. And I will use slash D plus, which means any number of digits. Okay. To escape this plus from here to match any any basically natural number. Okay, cool. So let's run this and see how it works. So it failed because there is no snapshot. Okay, because you need to create one place. the first time. Okay. Yeah, precisely. And since our previous release, we have this attachment stop. Yep. I can hear it and I can see Ooh. there is this pink overlay. Okay. Over this number. Nice. Okay. But, Debbie, uh, do you like the pink color? I'm more of a blue fan. Okay. Yeah. So now we can satisfy you. We have this new feature, which is called <laughs> mask color, and you can say blue, or nice. actually any, any CSS color would do it. Red, green, blue, for example. Cool. And, uh, yeah, if you just rerun the test and it gives you the blue gun. Let's see. So it fails now because the screenshots are different. It's comparing but pink to have... blue. Yeah, it's comparing pink to blue. And now we have your blue color here. And this is the difference. Used to have okay. pink. That's cool because maybe like you put a color and then there's something behind it and it's, you can't see it. So this makes it like very yeah. visible. Cool. Yep, exactly. Okay, moving on. I have one more feature. No, two more features to talk about. So the other one is related to code spaces. So here I am in a GitHub code space. Cool. I love code spaces. Yeah, so it has this VS Code extension installed, like Playwright test for VS Code. 
which gives me these green check marks and I can actually go ahead and run any tests here and they all you know, pass. However, it is really hard for me to debug anything here in this headless environment. I cannot hit the show browser button, you know, because there is there's no browser. No, no browser. Yeah, I, I don't have UI. However, with this release, we can say dash dash UI host. And this will open a new tab for me with a new with a UI mode. Nice. That will actually be connected to my code space. So I can go ahead and run tests from here. Just like you would do normally. Yeah, and they will give me the trace and everything. I can use peak locator here as well. Cool. And if I were to change anything here, okay, I should, should navigate and save it. It will go and update in my UI mode and I can hit the watch nice. button. And basically all of the UI mode is working just fine. Cool. And I'm so, guessing yeah. that we can okay. also use show trace viewer from the VS Code extension inside code spaces. Exactly. You can just hit this button. Nice. Just play this and we'll suggest you open a new tab. You open it. And will give you the trace, the live trace, basically for the yes. the the one we just presented you for the VS Code. So Perfect, very cool. Nice. Okay, and the last feature. So we used to have this npx Explorer install since forever, and everybody knows it. It installs browsers. Now, however, we also have uninstall. Oh, you would never want to uninstall Playwright. Uh, you would, you would never, you should never uninstall Playwright. But if circumstances are so, then you can do it now. You can also throw in the dash dash all here to remove all the browser installations that have been ever installed on this machine. So this is basically just in case out. you get a new job and you want to give back the computer. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, moving back to the presentation. So recap. Uh, Debbie, what did we see today? So now we have Show Trace Viewer from VS Code. So you can literally check that box, Show Trace Viewer, and it will open up the trace view of your tests. And from VS Code, you can press play, run those tests, and it makes it a much better developer experience with the new VS Code extension. Uh -huh. Network annotation. So now you have these lovely like tabs or badges to show API, show fulfilled. So you can easily see what's happening um, what your API call is doing, what your fill filled one is doing, et cetera, in the network tab. Uh -huh. uh, you can mask, well, you could always mask, but now you can change the color of your mask to a color that's easier, or visible, or just something that you like because you know it's your favorite color. So that's cool. Uh, now you have UI mode in a tab, which means if you're using GitHub code spaces, you have the same developer experience as you have uh, just a normal VS Code extension you can open up that UI mode either in the VS Code extension or uh, by opening it using the dash port UI, um, dash host. dash UI dash port. Yeah. Yes, yeah, the dash port of the UI dash host, yeah. Uh, also, and, this is very yeah. handy for Docker containers. So just any container cool. images where, where you are in a headless environment. Nice. And, and uninstall one. in case you need to just uninstall all your Playwright to, to, browser downloads. <laughs> To clean up everything, basically. Yes. Yes. Uh, awesome. Uh, so this was 135. If you like what we do, please give us a star. Uh, follow us on uh, Twitter. Give us a comment on YouTube and join our Discord. Yep. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, everybody, Thank for you. watching. See Thanks, you next everyone. Release. Bye. Bye.